Excuse me. Good afternoon, and welcome to Injustice Investigations. I'm your host, Al Scott. Before we get into the uh, newly developments of Empire Star Jesse, uh, two quick announcements. If you live in the state of Louisiana and you receive stamp benefits, uh, they will be released early for the month of March. Again, if you're in the state of Louisiana, your March benefits will be released early. Uh, the dates are on the uh, Injustice Investigations Facebook page, and it goes more and off into it when you get there. Now, secondly, the notorious one himself, El Chapo, has been found guilty on all ten counts, and now it is left up to the judge what his punishment will be. All right, now, it just, this is like a lifetime movie dealing with uh, Justin. I think I finally got the pronunciation of his name correct. Every day there's some new developments. Every day. Um, I just had a debate a few minutes ago with a, a black lady online. Uh, she made a statement that uh, why won't black people believe uh, Jesse's story? Well, for one, nobody believes a damn lie. So we can just get that on out the way. Now, number two. It doesn't have anything to do with Jesse being black and black people. So I asked her, what are you saying? Because Jesse is black, everybody black have to believe his story. Well, that's just super damn stupid. The only thing more dumber than that is the lie that Jesse keep telling for, about an attack that did not happen. Well, uh, we're learning a lot of new things today. For one, after the attack, of course, we know Jesse went home. But why did Jesse take the long way home? I mean, he had a straight shot. Now, after he went the long way home, there's no video of it. We don't know where he went. We don't know if he made a stop. Now, there is a video uh, of Jesse inside of his uh, department, where he lived at, inside the lobby, I mean, with the rope around his neck. Now, what the police were not saying the video that's outside of the apartments was the rope around his neck then. They were not answering that question. But sometimes silence can speak so loud. Well, after Jesse, Jesse went back home. He didn't want to report the alleged attack. Manager had to convince him to call the police. They did. Je uh, Jesse didn't. Somebody called for Jesse and sent the police there. Well, one thing I just found out in an email a little while ago, the individual that made that call asked that the police officers that was going to come to the apartment turn their body cameras off. Hmm. I'm not the smartest, but I mean, maybe, they, I don't know the reason, but that's what they asked. I mean, I would consider that a red flag. Uh, that's just me would consider that a red flag. Uh, usually when, when, especially somebody black, call the police, you want them to have the body cams on. You want the media to be out there when the police show up. But this individual who called uh, said, turn your body cams off. Uh, Miss Queen says, uh, I'm looking at that the same way. Yes, because it makes no earthly sense. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to be a professor to realize one thing. I, be I believe just his story. I believe his story. Like, I believe the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan has a dream of his white daughter saying I do to a black man. Jesse lying. But what's more baffling than that is that why is he lying? Why is he lying? Okay, let's fast forward. Now, when the police were there the first night, they asked him and his manager to give their cell phones over. Well, the lady said the other day, he don't have to give his uh, cell phone over because he, he is the victim. Well, yeah, he is the alleged victim. But here's why they have to, that, that the police officers wanted the cell phone, put it that way. Uh, that's uh, routine in certain situations. And number two, when Justice said he was on the phone with his manager doing the alleged attack, 
Well, that cell phone became part of the crime scene. So what about his manager? Well, his manager collaborated just his story and said, yes, we were on the phone together and I heard the racial and homophobic slurs. So that's why his cell phone also became part of the crime scene that they didn't want to release and they didn't. Well, a lot of things have happened since then. Uh, two suspects, I mean two persons of interest was put out from Chicago Police Department. They turned out to be just homeless people, which I, I honestly believe that that was something done by Chicago Police Department to see how far Jesse would take this because they knew those two figures was nowhere near the area. Had it, they really picked up somebody, I really believe Jesse was going to play this thing all the way to trial day. Okay, so that's done. Two homeless people were nowhere near the crime scene. All right. Jesse says two white men, I've I'm, I'm, I'm got something I'm going to show y'all in just a minute. Two white men with ski masks on them. All black, rope around their neck, and one of them carried a container. Hear me good now. A container. Containers sometimes pretty large. All right. Uh, and poured that substance on him, which the authorities said, okay, from what he said or whatever, they believe that the, uh, that liquid substance may have been uh, may have been bleach. Okay, they went and they looked for that. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. Went to Subway. Subway didn't have one. Well, look, the two white men coming here with ski masks on and a black outfit and a rope around their neck and one had a container of bleach. Nope. Never did. You got footage of Jesse, uh, Jesse leaving uh, Subway. Footage of him going to Subway. There's no footage of him being attacked. Investigators have looked at hours and hours and hours of surveillance cameras, and they have found absolutely nothing to corroborate his story. In one of those videos, however, though, we must be fair, there is a 60-second gap. So what was going on then? We don't know. 60 seconds gap. All right. Now, it was bleach. Detectives looked. Police looked. Couldn't find it. This is 13 days now. Well, a reporter from the New York Post shows up. I'm just going to go and investigate, you know, for myself. I'm a reporter. I have the... Uh, Credentials. I can go out there and, and do what I need to do, you know, to help out. Because maybe the maybe uh, 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 the police department uh, missed something, you know. So I'm gonna go and and see what I can find. Well, the reporter from oh, excuse me, my voice keep going in and out. The reporter from New York Post made a big announcement. I have found it. I have found the bleach. I have found the bleach. Really. It was extremely close to where Jesse said the attack happened. Now remember, it was a container of bleach, right? Now watch this. This is bleach. About your average size, you know, maybe a little bigger. This is a hot sauce ball. So why am I showing, you probably know why I'm showing you the bleach, but you want to know why I'm showing you this uh, Louisiana hot sauce ball. Well, I'm showing you this because the reporter from the New York Post said what he found was in a hot sauce bottle. So a little bleach left and it smelled like bleach. Do you know how damn difficult it is to get this into there unless you have a funnel? That's the only way. But if you're going to change this out into something, you're going to make it more easy for yourself. Hot sauce ball don't make any damn sense. This here don't make any sense because it never happened. All right, so that's the breaking news story. He can get ready to do some time uh, with Jesse because that's lying. That's lying. Lying to the police. Uh, Jesse, when he went home after the attack, he went the long way. Can't figure out why he did that. Cannot figure out why he did that. There was no attack. Everything that he says Tells the police it never happened. It never happened. It just never 
It never happened. And why would you request the police officers to turn off their body cameras when they come? That makes no earthly damn sense. You're setting a scene. That's what you're doing. You're setting the scene up. It's just like somebody's breaking into somebody's home and they're going to kill them, but they want to make they want the scene to look like a robbery. They get throwing things everywhere, you know. But they forget to take the TV. They forget to take the jury. They forget to get the wallet out of the man's pocket if it was a really a burglary or whatever, right? And Jesse is acting. And when he's on Empire, he's extremely good. He's extremely believable. But in real life, he sucks. His acting skills in real life sucks. I honestly look within a matter of days uh, for Jesse to be arrested. Now, where Jesse said uh, the alleged crime happened at, I'm looking at my notes here. He said it happened in the 300 block of East Lower North Water Street. Pretty busy street. High rise apartments and hotels. Two of his neighbors said they don't believe him. This just don't happen over here. One neighbor even went so far as to say, you can split it 50-50. Half gay, half black. It's just like if you're in Shreveport, Louisiana, and you're going to the Cooper Road. Okay, so it's just like white racist men with ski masks going on the Cooper Road. It just don't happen like that. It just don't happen. It doesn't make any earthly damn sense. It was extremely cold that night. Jesse bundled up. They knew who I was off the bat. Hey, Jesse! Jesse! You that motherfucker from Empire. Let's make America great again. Don't make no sense. Don't make any earthly damn sense. I don't know a lot of racist white folks going to sit down and watch Empire, first of all. Something happened. I believe something really did happen. But what Jesse said happened, it did not happen that way. Who is he protecting? I don't know. I have my theories, and I'm going to throw them out here today. And again, this is not fact. These are just my theories, okay? I believe, uh, somebody said, I believe, I never believed that lie. Uh, Jacqueline Hall said she never believed that lie. And, and you know what? And I have to admit, uh, I did for a split second, Jacqueline. I did. And now I hate it. I had to go back and apologize because once I read the report the next day, I got angry, and I sent out a long post in his favor. But even while I was doing the post, there was a couple of things that bothered me, uh, which I call red flags. It's like, why would white men be out in a, with a ski mask on in Chicago at 2 a.m. in the morning? It didn't make any sense. But it wasn't important to me to try to figure it out. I want to get this out here because nobody should have to endure this. Whether you're black, white, young, old, gay, straight, heterosexual, it just shouldn't happen. Hate crime should not happen. So I put it out. But just as fast as I put it out, I had to go get it back and make a public apology because Jesse lied. Jesse lied. And I'm one billion percent positive that he lied. And the police department, they're playing a the game with him. That's why they keep telling the public, well, uh, we don't see anything to discredit what he's saying. We just can't prove what he said. You know, so right now we're still treating this as a hate crime. In a little while, he's going to be arrested. And he should be arrested, and he should be made to foot that entire damn bill for all the lost man out and work that they had to do on a wild goose chase. They on a fool's errand, and they know it. But here's why it's taking so long. He's a very popular man. He's a celebrity. He's got a lot of power behind him. He's got a lot of power with him. We got to do this. We got to uh, do everything by the books on this one. Because we don't want the people to come out and say, y'all didn't do this, y'all didn't do that. They can't say that. They cannot say that because they're giving us their undivided attention. But as I said the other day, if this was a white man, y'all, if, if Jesse was a white man that had accused two black men of, uh, 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 of a possible hate crime, even before the Chicago Police Department and the FBI had finished, would finish their investigation. The Reverend Al Sharpton and the NAACP would be at Fox Studio demanding that they fire him. Are we going to boycott this here? And you're going to have to take the whole show off the air. So why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that for, uh, for this. I don't want them to do it to us, and we shouldn't want to do it to them. It's, it, it's not okay on either end. The NAACP, Al Sharpton, they're being extremely quiet. 
extremely quiet. This makes it difficult for people to believe a real attack. It does. Jesse met somebody online. It's a theory. He went to go meet him. It was a booty call. Bunnish went bad. No, he met somebody on Craigslist or something. It still went bad. And he conjured up this story. Two white men had been in that area, people. The cops probably would have arrested them. They'd have been tried and convicted on a damn lie. Jesse wouldn't have said nothing. He'd have played it 100%. So it's not an issue as to why black people are not believing him. There's a lot of white people that are not uh, believing him. It doesn't make any earthly damn sense. When, about three or four days ago, we did a show. Same subject. And I didn't do it until we got on air. We counted out every damn red flag that we could find. I think we came out with 22 uh, red flags. I'm trying to read something that uh, Ms. Hall says. She says, I never believed it because most white people would not uh, know who he is. And I think he was trying uh, to draw some attention to himself to promote his record uh, career. And that could very well be possible, you know. And so that's the biggest thing is like, we know you're lying, but why did you lie? Why did you lie? Why did your uh, uh, manager lie with you? If I'm on the phone with someone and I can hear them being attacked, if I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana, and they in Washington, D.C., I'm going to call 911 from here and tell them what's going on there. And they can go and figure out what's really going on. I can hear racial and homophobic slurs and tussling and all that. I'm going to call the police. I mean, I think the average person would do that now, but his manager didn't. Oh, I heard the racial slurs. The homophobic, I heard it. Why you didn't call the damn police? And then when he got here, it still was... Uh, 42 minutes before you call the police. Things are just not adding up. Now watch this here with the police records. They finally released those to the police department. And they was accepted. Until they did their investigation with what they sent them. Here's what Chicago police said. Rejected. They sent them back. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. I'm going to tell you why. What Jesse did, or Jesse, whatever his name is, he sent it, uh, pulled it through a uh, PDF file. And that can be subject to uh, uh, manipulation. Uh, you can add numbers, and you can take numbers away from it. So we don't want something that you possibly doctored up. We want the real deal. So when Chicago police sent that back, that tells me one thing. They're tired. They're getting tired of playing the, the, this game with him. And in, in the twinkling of an eye, they're going to arrest him. Why wouldn't you send the whole thing? What, what is it you don't want them to see? Why did you want to go outside that night and you just received threats at Fox Studio? But you're going to go out, a black gay man, 2 a.m. in the morning in Chicago alone. You didn't want no bodyguards. Your manager didn't even call the bodyguards when he hurt you, uh, the alleged attack. If he didn't want to call the police, you ha have to call the bodyguards. They're paid to protect him. But he was asked before he left, do you want security? No. They say they're trying to kill you. He didn't want security. That's because what he was really, where he was really going, he didn't want nobody to know. Stopped by and got a sub and a salad after the event happened or whatever. His phone was intact. Why they having an, uh, 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 a struggle? He's fighting them off. He had a salad in his hand while they're struggling. He's fighting them off. And he, he had the sandwich, the subway, in his hand, fighting them off. When he got to the house, everything was still intact. Foam to his ear, he's still talking. He's still holding both of the items. And he's still fighting. Bad man. Shut your mouth. He bad. He bad. So the police look and say, your salad is still intact? The sandwich didn't fall over? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. He didn't drop his cell phone. And he didn't go straight home. He took the long way home. He just been attacked. And who keeps the damn noose or rope around their neck? My point is this here. There is enough hate in, the, in, in this city today. And most of it, uh, racism became, went on the rise when Donald Trump got in office, you know, the guy that's impersonating the president, racism went up. 
It did. And so we don't need to add to uh, what's already going on in this country. We don't want to do that. I think it's, 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 it's wrong to uh, allege that something happened to you and it didn't. Because somebody could get arrested for something. that They may have done that crime before. And because they was in the area, well, I think you did it. And so they arrest him. It's just like Shamika Moffat in Winsboro, Louisiana, several years ago. We did a story on her. She said the uh, Ku Klux Klan set her on fire. Now, if anybody don't think about Louisiana and Winsboro, well, that's KKK City. So they took her to a park and they set her on fire. I think at least 60% of her upper body had been burnt. I didn't believe that. It just make, it didn't make any damn sense because the KKK took toothpaste or something and wrote on the car, KKK. Even the KKK is a little more sophisticated than that, so we knew she was lying. Two days later, the police department came on uh, before the camera and said she lied. When she come out of the hospital, she's going to be arrested. If uh, three white men, racist, had been in that area, they could have got arrested for that crime. If she died from her injuries, they would spend the rest of their life in prison trying to convince people that they didn't do it, and they would never, never, ever be believed. Tawana Brawley, when she came out and she said, uh, I think it was three, you know, four white men raped me. One of them was a police officer. And they took feces and smeared it all over my face and wrote racial slurs all over my body. Stained these folks for life. Grand jury came back. Didn't happen. Al Sharpton had already ran to her rescue. Both were sued and had to spend big bucks because of that damn lie. We move too fast sometimes. That... It is hurtful to be accused of something and you know you didn't do it. I have no respect for uh, uh, Jesse at uh, Empire. I used to enjoy him acting, but uh, what he did, it's a forgivable, I mean, you can forgive and go on, but it could start a racial war in this country, and that is not something that, that we need. Um, and I'll be glad when it's over. He can go ahead and be arrested, and again, I hope they make him foot that entire bill, because this this was a witch hunt. This is a fool's error. This did not happen. If you went to meet somebody, what if someone said something about a grinder. I hadn't looked at that website yet. I, I guess it's for gays. I don't know. But you're a grown man. And I, I know you're grown and you're a celebrity and some things you don't want people to know about. But don't come back and lie about something that didn't happen and somebody could be picked up and sent to prison off of your damn lie. Now, whatever you did, you did. And black people, before, we, before I get off, let me say this to you. It don't have a damn thing to do with him being black and us. Right is right and wrong is wrong. You can, there is no defense for absolute wrong. He has no defense. There is no defense for absolute wrong. It's not. I'm Al Scott with Injustice Investigations. Bid the Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Y'all have a good day.